And then the third um, round table is investing in mining and mining services. And that'll be um, moderated by Brian Kapilikisha. Brian has more than 20 years experience in management and financial consulting. Um, and so his team of panelists will again, give many more, more detailed insights than we could possibly do uh, in this morning's session. We, 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 we will be having a discussion around uh, mining and, uh, in, and, the, and impact investment and how you know, impact investment can contribute towards uh, an effective uh, mining supply chain. Okay, now, um, um, so the spotlight will be on, the, on Zambia as a regional hub for impact investing. Okay, now I'll, I'll just talk about uh, mining uh, itself um, as uh, uh, how, how, how I'll just talk about mining and how uh, important it is uh, for, for Zambia. Uh, mining uh, contributes to about 75% of uh, exports, 12% uh, GDP, 1% employment, and 30% uh, direct taxes. Uh, you, you, you've heard that uh, only 1% is employment. As a result, uh, dependent, dependence on mining is not good enough because uh, it has low direct jobs. Uh, uh, it experiences economic shocks as a result of uh, uh, commodity price fluctuation. And then it has no real uh, uh, inclusive uh, impact or benefits for the poor. Uh, however, mining, if structured, uh, it, however, mining and uh, the activities around it, if structured properly, can have great uh, multiplier effects uh, to the indirect supply chain and uh, uh, also wider economic uh, areas. Uh, this, this can be done through uh, promoting um, linkages across sectors in local and wider economic uh, areas, and uh, also coming up with uh, very effective uh, social investment programs, uh, supplier development programs, and obviously promoting uh, forward and backward linkages uh, in the local and wider economy. Uh, mining as a result uh, remains um, a very significant player uh in the in the in the economy although we are trying to diversify uh, uh activities you know to ensure that other economic sectors uh, participate or are fully uh integrated uh with, with, with mining uh uh we mining will definitely remain as a catalyst for local economic development as a result of its multiplier effects uh we we we, we have uh um, it has been proven, for instance, in particular countries that effective social, uh, de uh, social development programs, social investment uh, programs, supplier development programs, uh, if uh, structured properly, uh, does generate uh, very, very economic, uh, very, very good economic outcomes. Uh, however, the SMEs that participate in mining have got some challenges which uh, come with uh, the industry. Uh, there is a lack of access to capital. There is uh, a lack of access to the link linkages. Uh, you know, there is very little information about opportunities. There are issues regarding um, uh, certification, quality control. The SMEs themselves have got uh, capacity uh, shortfalls they need to be strengthened in terms of skills development and uh, technology. Uh, so this discussion is going to be about uh, impact investment. Uh, why is there not enough uh, impact investment investors uh, participating in the mining supply chain? And why is there, no, why, why aren't mining why isn't mining also attracting enough uh, in, in, in investors? Uh, I'm going to um, start the first question uh, to uh, Mr. Yoram Chulu on the panel. What do you think needs to happen in the policy and regulatory ecosystem in Zambia to increase impact investment in mining and mining services? 
Uh, thank you so much, uh, Brian. Um, I would like to say that uh, to, to start with, as Zambia, we primarily need to look at formulating certain policies that to address or, or look at the um, ecosystem deficiencies that we have uh, in, in as far as uh, the law is concerned that governs the mining industry. So to start with, we probably, I think, need to look at enhancing our local uh, content approach of Section 20 of the Mines and Minerals Development Act, uh, which borders on actually enhancing the local businesses and empowering the local community, I mean, the local Zambians in uh, having positions, for instance, within the mining industry in, in regard to supervision. Uh, the same provision also section 20 uh, seeks to, to provide an opportunity or preference to goods that are supposed to be procured uh, within Zambia or manufactured within the country. So what I can say about that is uh, in terms of the regulatory, uh, regulatory uh, framework, as well as the, the policies that we need to put in place, we, we have some deficiencies that we probably need to enhance at uh, national level. The other thing I want to, to also highlight is we, we don't have a coordinated approach towards uh, CSR. Uh, if you look at uh, the way CSR is administered across the mining industry, I think it's left for each operator of, of every mine to, to look at what it is that they're going to do for the community. So in short, we need a policy that should also uh, speak into that and govern the, the CSR. Uh, the other thing I also um, wish to mention regarding the, 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 the specifics uh, on the ecosystem uh, deficiencies that are there on the regulatory framework is that we also need to look at um, strict engagement of the local authorities and uh, the communities on identifying the needs that, that are there and uh, what it is that would be provided for them as a particular investor comes in, in, in that particular area. Then um, they also, they, they, there's also um, another challenge that exists in, in the law that we have governing the resettlement action plans uh, as well as the, 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 the magnitude of an investment, for instance, coming through. Mm -hmm. So you, you get to understand, uh, Brian, that if, if a mine is about to open and uh, they, they go through the processes of an environmental impact assessment, environmental project brief, they go through all those formalities. There comes a stage where there are people that will be affected by that particular investment by virtue of maybe their their, 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 their houses being found within the mine right area that is intended to be developed. So when you look at resettlement action plans, for instance, the law that informs the resettlement action plan, it does not um, categorically prescribe a lot of minimum or baseline information. And, and that provides a, a big gray area for the investor because it leaves the, the, the investor chance to to just get to decide that I'm going to move uh, occupants X to position Y. And uh, when I move them there, uh, maybe the only basic thing I need to provide is a house for them. But does that match the historical value of their setting that they had? Does that also match the other you know, incentives that they ought to be given for being displaced from an area where they were indigenous? You know. So uh, the, 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 that, uh, I think, provides a challenge in terms of the, the legal framework that should govern the ecosystem, um, the, 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 the ecosystem progression in that regard. The other thing is... Um, but so, 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 sorry, Mr. Trulu, uh, if you can be, wind up as quickly as possible. We've only got an hour and there are several questions. All right. No, no I'm, I'm, I'm just drawing up my conclusion now. Uh, the, the, the other thing also that uh, exists is, uh, or, or that rather maybe the government now is trying to look at to address some of the gaps I've highlighted, is the introduction of what we're calling the value chain officers. And uh, these are officers that have been introduced to look at the entire mineral value from uh, production all the way up to the end product. I think maybe uh, for, the, for, for, for lack of, of time, 
uh, I'll, I'll get to mention here that uh, in a nutshell, those are the challenges that exist with a legal framework. In short, we have gaps in the law that we need to formulate and uh, address. And then we also need to, to look at implementation of some of the regulations that we already have existing. Thank you very much, Mitari. Thank you very much, Mr. Chulu. Uh, the next question would go to Mr. Anthony Kabaye from the Quito Chamber of Commerce. What areas of the mining value chain are most often overlooked by entrepreneurs? And uh, please, can we have, this is not a question and answer session. Can we please, uh, you know, uh, interact as we are uh, speak, speaking or as somebody is uh, answering? I would encourage participation. Or, or, or even clarifications as we're having the discussions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, and, and, and Mr. Kabaye, sorry, just two minutes, maximum of two, two minutes, please, for that particular question. Thank you. Okay, no, no problem. Yes, uh, you asked about uh, uh, the mining value chains that are most often overlooked by entrepreneurs in Zambia. Uh, you know, the, the mines have got what they call the core goods and services area. Okay, uh, this consists of goods and services with an annual spend of about a billion dollars, okay, in the mining sector. All right, and that uh, can be looked at at the ADB report uh, by the late uh, Dr. Wilfred uh, uh, Lombe, may it so rest in peace. Um, so that, that area which consists, consists of contract miners, the tier one miners, they are major and critical equipment and component suppliers uh, and service providers in both the mining and metallurgical plants. So you find that that area constitutes uh, about a billion spent uh, by, by the mine. So we tend, as Zambians, as Zambian entrepreneurs, we, we, we don't have much of that cake, okay? And 90%, uh, of that is dominated by foreign companies. Yes, there are challenges, okay? To be in that uh, elite group, uh, you've already highlighted some of them being, you know, or capital, like that, lack of information, uh, lack of local content policy, like uh, Yoram uh, was, was saying, because you know, it, it's, it's difficult to, mining is capital intensive, no doubt about it, okay? And definitely to get capital in Zambia, it is very expensive. So maybe <laughs> there and uh, ask my colleagues to, to chip in since you only gave me two, two minutes and uh, I'll come in. Thank, thank you, Mr. Kavaye. And then the next question would go to Lorraine Tembo. Uh, Lorraine, what opportunities are there for local suppliers and how can they access them? Thank you very much, Brian. I was, um, I, was I, I was, I didn't unmute. Um, Mr. Kavaye has uh, partially answered uh, the question that you, you just told me. Um, the opportunities for local suppliers uh, could be uh, several, but what we have seen um, happen, happening is that there's been very little room um, for the participation of local suppliers. When I look at uh, uh, how our suppliers or contractors are, can be segmented, we have those that are purely very small uh, scale enterprises and those that are partly medium scale enterprises. We also have the ones that are already doing something, they have something going, and all they need uh, especially is um, space to participate. So where do the opportunities lie? There are several, but um, the question would be, why have they not uh, been participating more effectively? And I'm guessing that that's part of the reason why we're having this discussion today. We have, um, in our operation, more than 50,000 products and services that um, uh, our, our local suppliers can uh, participate in. Um, so basically the, the, the ranges are wide, but the main question is, are our local suppliers fully informed um, about where these opportunities lie? 
and what should we do in terms of providing that information? Um, I think this might be a, a question that my colleague from the Northwest Chamber might pick up. Um, but I, what I see is that the opportunities, how can they access this? To access these, the local suppliers really need to have a strong relationship with the mining operations in order to, for them to have up-to-date information to follow very closely. And uh, the hows of how to do this obviously is something that would be up for discussion um, at some later point. Thank you, Lorraine. And then the next question would go to Henny. Uh, as an SME, what are some of the challenges, challenges you, are, you have faced in growing your business? Thank you very much, Brian. Um, yes, as a, as a SME, we've, we've faced a lot of challenges in the past. And I've seen um, in, in our business, to, to grow your business is a daily work. It's a constant. Um, the challenges that we have faced... So, sorry, Henny, we can't see you properly. Uh, you're not facing the camera. Can you see me now? Yeah, now we can see you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was saying, uh, so the challenges that we've been faced with in the past um, can be classified as the following. We have, we have three levels that, that we've identified. So number one will be attracting new customer base or expanding your existing customer base. Number two will be operations. And number three will be um, increasing your turnover within your cash flow abilities. Just briefly on number one, um, attracting new customers. Customers in general prefer to work with um, well-established companies and also with um, original equipment manufacturers. This comes with a perceived notion that the SMEs in country cannot do the job or a specific um, task. And I'm very glad to hear that Mr. Yoran, I hope I pronounced that correct, sir, um, touched on this on, on section 20, because I think there's a lot of good suppliers within Zambia um, that can do the task if, if been helped with, um, with, with funding or just to give uh, the chance. Um, attracting new customers, you also need to diversify your business but you need to be very close to your to your current scope of repair or current scope of, of work so you don't go too far from from, from your, your core business of your company operational side um, in the past 24 months we've seen that unreliable power supply was a, was a great um, challenge for us um, the people that's got workshops and any supply um, everything needs power to be manufactured. Um, trained and skilled technical staff is a challenge um, that, that can be overcome, but it is quite difficult. And then one thing that we've also seen is um, sometimes you, in, in your personnel, you, you need to get the morale up so that people take ownership of the operations so that they can grow the business for themselves and for their families. The last one, <clears throat> increasing turnover with your cash flow abilities. I think this speaks for itself. As a SME, it's one thing to get um, a project or a contract or a new job, but it is very difficult to sometimes fund that. Um, and that can be, that can put a lot of um, strain on your current cash flow. Sorry, Brian, you're still on mute. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, sorry, Henny, I was saying, re regarding opportunities uh, for SMEs uh, to the market, to the mining market, do you think it, as a result of capability, uh, or, 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 or is it just that uh, perhaps uh, the environment does not uh, support mining SMEs uh, with... Uh, the opportunities to get to the mining market. I think there's, I think there's a lot of, of uh, potential in the market. I've seen that. 
And um, I think uh, platforms like, like today um, really gives uh, SMEs the, the place and the, the, the platform to really showcase what they can be and what, what can be supplied um, with, with, within Zambia. Um, during COVID-19, where borders were locked, um, I saw a lot of uh, SMEs really step up to the challenge and also um, and, and, uh, and capitalized on this, which, which was quite, quite good for to see. Thank you, Henny. Thank you, Henny. Then the next question will go to Mokombi. Uh, Mokombi, uh, how, how can SMEs enter this sector and what do you see as the growth opportunities? <laughs> Thank you so much, Brian. Um, I think first of all, uh, I know you've given me two minutes, but first of all, you have uh, uh, in your preamble, you mentioned something very important that mining and the mining sector is something that is very, very important. And I want to add that uh, it is important because there is a strong history with regards to mining and the developments it has brought about in the past. And there are high expectations with regard to the mining sector, uh, with regards to the current structures of how the sector is actually uh, designed. So therefore, that's why we are here. I believe that, yes, of course, there are opportunities and uh, uh, there are some, some challenges uh, that we do have uh, you know, in uh, acquiring opportunities in this uh, sector. Uh, so now coming to the question uh, that you have asked, I think uh, you, you would like me to, to talk about uh, how mines can create business opportunities, right? No, no, no. How, how can an SME enter this sector? And what okay. do you see as the growth how opportunity? Can, yes, how can an SME enter this sector? And what do we see as, a grow, as growth opportunities? First of all, I would yeah. like to say that uh, from the chamber point of view, Northwestern chamber point of view, we are a membership driven organization and uh, whatever it is that we do, it is done on behalf of the members. So we have uh, a lot of conversations with government, conversations with stakeholders like Prospero, conversations with uh, stakeholders like the mining sector and everyone else so that we can get input. We, we have dialogue with Green the members Michael. and they make submissions with regard to some of their, their challenges. We've been doing surveys and some of the surveys uh, that uh, have been conducted, especially in the last uh, one year, uh, some of the feedback that I'm going to give you now. Uh, so some of the opportunities, uh, first of all, let me say that availability of information is, is, is very critical. And uh, it becomes very, very impossible for SMEs to identify opportunities effectively if there is no availability of, of, of information. So what is needed, first of all, uh, for SMEs to enter into the sector is that we need to start having conversations with the mining sector. The mining sector needs to come up with uh, a system of a, a way of uh, actually availing the available opportunities you know, on the market so that members can actually get prepared for, for them. So therefore, uh, we know that there are opportunities in the supplies uh, uh, area, you know, in terms of supplying consumables in the, in the transport services, in the mining services, in the engineering services, in the cleaning services, catering services. But what is required is that the mines should be able to try and give some of these opportunities to, to, to local uh, suppliers, to local contractors, so that you know, they can also gain experience and begin to grow their businesses. What is required is that we need through the chambers of commerce and other business organizations that tenders can be floated for, for some of these services. And that is how SMEs can actually access some of these opportunities. The other thing that needs to be done is that um, SMEs also, after having uh, you know, this information, needs to work uh, in consortiums. We need to create consortiums. We need to create partners so that we have a value chain that is going to be workable. For instance, uh, this is an, an impact investment uh, you know, roadshow, which was talking about uh, you know, opportunities for, for SMEs you know, to be capacity to build when they meet certain criteria. So meaning that the mines can now uh, participate in uh, you know, having to create an environment where SMEs can enter into that sector by being part of the value chain where they're saying, okay, yes, 
we have these opportunities available, but you need to be capacity built in these and these areas, then uh, the chamber can come and say, okay, Prospero, we need our members trained in this area and so forth. And uh, then they can be linked to impact investors and other funders so that they can actually begin to, uh, to access that kind of information. Then, of course, the other thing is that the chamber needs to continue advocacy, uh, you know, through, uh, you know, speaking to uh, the mining sector, the different uh, departments. We have to have that conversation. It has to be open uh, so that we can effectively lobby for our members to begin now to, to, to partake of the bigger cake in the mining sector. Thank you. Thank you, Mokombi. Mr. Kavai, uh, what is your take on impact investment? Uh, in the mining sector, there is not enough uh, impact investors. Uh, is it uh, that they just don't know about impact investment, or is there any uh, is there any head or towards embracing impact investment? Uh, thank, thank you, thank you, Brian. Um, I, I think you know. Let's look at it in this way. Uh, there are different. Uh, you, you, you know, entrepreneurs that go into the mines, okay? And uh, at each level, uh, there are challenges that go with that. So you, you find that uh, there are those uh, SMEs uh, that are, are not investment ready, but they also have to do business with the mines. Uh, those guys who are not investment ready, uh, they, they need to be helped out. They, they need those guys uh, who need grants, who need technical support. And that is what would propel those guys to do business with the mines. Then you find that there are those SMEs uh, that uh, have graduated, okay, and they are investment ready. And uh, you, you find that like, uh, Tumbi had said, they've graduated because maybe they used certain initiatives, they went into a joint venture or something, and they've learned certain skills, and uh, they're investment ready, okay? But there are also challenges there in Zambia. Uh, you'll find that capital, like we've, we've been talking about, you've mentioned that as well. Capital is key. Uh, in Zambia, you don't easily access the finance. Uh, interest rates are just too high. And uh, you'll find you, at the end of the day, you are not uh, competitive. Uh, somebody from somewhere gets uh, money at a cost of one to 2%. Two You're getting the cost of that money at 30%. That does not work out. Uh, that's how you, those are the challenges that these, these SMEs 